Gola Hadibul, Gola Hadibul, Gola Hadibul. Greetings, greetings, everyone. So, today I just want to talk about one offense to the Holy Name. As we know, there are ten offenses to the Holy Name when we chant the Holy Name. One of them is chanting without attention. So, I started to think, why, why is it an offense not to chant with attention? And the answer came to me that Krishna and his name are the same. So, by the grace of uh, Nimi Maharaj, my friend, I was reminded of uh, a verse in uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, actually, two verses um, I'd just like to read. Um, this is from Madhya Leela 17, uh, verse 132. Uh, spoken by Lord Chaitanya himself. He says that uh, Nama Vigraha Svarup Tina Ekarup Tine Beda Nahi Tina Chid Ananda Rup The Lord's holy name, his form and his personality are all one and the same. There is no difference between them. Since all of them are absolute, they are transcendently blissful. And then this very nice verse uh, Verse 133 Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shudo Nitya Mukto Dinatva Nama Namino The holy name of Krishna is transcendently blissful. It bestows all spiritual benedictions, for it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of all pleasure. Krishna's name is complete, and it is the form of all transcendental mellows. It is not a material name under any condition, and it is no less powerful than Krishna himself. Since Krishna's name is not contaminated by the material qualities, there is no question of its being involved with Maya. Krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual. It is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. This is because the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. So this is a very wonderful, very mystical thing. <laughs> As we know, um, just like in this material world, if I call out your name, hey, Stephen, 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 hey, Michael, 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 they will not be here just by calling their name. They may be in Florida or Timbuktu or wherever. But if I call their name, they certainly won't just be here. Uh, so that's what we call relative sound. Another example is given of water. If I'm thirsty and I uh, say the word water, 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 it's not going to quench my thirst. In other words, the substance of water and water, the sound vibration, are not the same. They are different. That is what we call relative sound. And that is our experience. That is our only experience. But now we are coming to hear about this path of bhakti yoga, we are coming to hear about the spiritual world, we are coming to hear about the supreme divine couple Radha and Krishna from the pure devotees. And we are now hearing that actually the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are the same, absolute. Hmm. So this is uh, not something we can understand with the material mind. But... Um, we're hearing from authority that they are the same. So, uh, therefore, when when it says, in the, as one of the offenses, that we should chant the holy name of Krishna attentively, now we can understand why that is uh, necessary. Because just like if Krishna walked into the room now, <laughs> I would certainly give him my full attention. Um, and the holy name of Krishna and Krishna are the same. So when I'm hearing and chanting the holy name, Krishna is there, Krishna is there. Uh, and therefore, he deserves my full attention. This is, this is logical, this, this we can understand. And for this reason, we, when we chant the holy names, we should chant with attention. So it's actually very beautiful because uh, this sound vibration that's coming out of my mouth. Of course, we know there are three stages of chanting. Um, in the beginning, Nama Parad, we chant the fence, then uh, chanting uh, with the, the semblance of the holy name. Um, 
reflection of the holy name, and then of course Shudanam, the pure name, three stages. Um, but uh, in all three stages, what we should be trying to do is chant with attention. Um, so it, it's beautiful because I, 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 I'm, Krishna has kindly given me this mm, tongue and given me these ears, so I, I can I can say Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. I can say it. No impediment. Um, I don't have to pay anything to say it. <laughs> I can say it any place, any time. I can say it on my own. I don't have to be with others necessarily, although it's nice to chant together. And then I've just given me these ears, you know, I can hear. So there it is. I can say Hare Krishna and just listen. Just listen to that sound that's coming out of my mouth. Uh, that is chanting attentively. And it's very nice because, uh, of course, when you do that, your attention is not going elsewhere, ideally. In other words, the more full attention you give to that, hearing that sound, uh, the more we're actually giving our attention to Krishna. And in this way, we begin to experience the the peace and the, the sweetness, the beauty of Krishna and and being with him uh, because of chanting the holy name means that I'm being with Krishna uh, in the presence of Krishna of course that will depend as my Guruji said on the degree of surrender of one's heart the extent to which will actually experience that Krishna and his name are not different so this is one this is now a good understanding of why we should chant attentively and how to chant attentively then we may, the next question we may say is, well, um, of course, then Krishna uh, confirms this in Bhagavad Gita. He says, by hearing carefully, with your mind and heart uh, fully attached to me, you will experience divine communion in my shelter and be, and be entirely freed from all misgivings and doubts. Uh, so once again, Krishna is saying, I want your full attention by hearing carefully with your mind and heart fully absorbed like that, not 50%, 90%, fully. So let me raise the question, well, okay, you know, Krishna is saying, give me all your love, all your attention. But we may say, well, what about that? But so many other relationships, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, friends, uh, wives, husbands, what? so many, and uh, there are meant to be loving, affectionate relationships. How, how will I have love for them if I'm giving all my love to Krishna? Hmm? <laughs> Fair question. But we we need to hear from the Vedas the explanation of that. And that is, they give two examples. One is that uh, if you want to uh, water a tree, you want, you want every part of the tree to be nourished, you know, every leaf, every twig, every branch. Um, what's the way to do that? The, the, way, the way to do that is put water in the root of the tree. And that water will sustain and nourish the whole tree. No, no leaves, no twigs left out. All of them will get the benefit. Whereas if you just try to water in individually each leaf, you don't water the root, this won't work. Uh, this is not the, the way that they will be nourished. Uh, and so we understand that Krishna is the root of creation. Uh, Adi Purusham, the original person, uh, the origin of all emanations. Um, so by giving the root, by giving the root of existence, Krishna, our love and attention, that love and attention is distributed throughout creation. So we can understand this makes sense. Uh, another uh, example is given is just like the, the, the body. It has uh, different elements, different parts. Um, and just like if we want to, uh, how can you say, get some nice food, <laughs> um, what is the function? The function of the hand is to put food in the mouth. Hmm? And then the food is nourished and it goes to, the nourishment goes through all parts of the body. But if the, fan, the, fan, the hand just tries to individually, separately grab the food and digest it just by putting it in the hand and <laughs> trying to squeeze out the, the goodness, it don't work. It's not the natural way. So this again is another example of how we are all part and parcel of Krishna and by rendering him service, um, we are thereby nourishing the whole creation. Hmm. 
So this is another reason why we can understand that it is appropriate for us to give our full of our full attention uh, to Sri Krishna, uh, and in this way we benefit the whole creation, the whole creation. Just like they say that um, uh, anyone who loves God will automatically love all God's creatures. This is the test. Yeah? If he really loves God, he will love all God's creatures. And he, a pure devotee, he knows the process for loving God, and that is full surrender, full surrender, uh, atmanivedanam, complete surrender. And it's not only in the Vedic scriptures, Lord Jesus Christ, that the same thing, that the, the first principle, the first law, is that one should love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, thy whole mind, thy whole soul, like that. So it's confirmed again. So uh, now that we know the the process, we just need to apply it and keep keep on going down the road of devotion um, by the grace of Sri Guru and Garanga. Hadi bol, hadi bol, hadi bol.